All right. Hello. I'm going to do it a little bit more drawing today. Another little live stream that should be up on the... Oh, my the camera's not on. Hold on a second. I've got to turn the cameras on for them to work. And we got to put memory cards in them. It's important. So that we can record to make a video, a faster video edit later. So, uh, you know, for the people who don't want to watch two hour streams. Hey, good morning, everybody. Okay, that's a little better. Let's see if this works now. There we go. Yeah. Everyone doing all right today? See and hear me all right? <clears throat> hmm. When you're at work, well, my bad. Hey. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I hope you are too, DeSoto. Is your name or something? Okay. So I did one drawing in this notebook, sketchbook already, but I was pretty happy. After I finished streaming this drawing, I went in and I added some little kind of detail, not details, but I drew in it a little bit with like some grayscale markers. And I kind of liked how that turned out. So Erica. What time is it here? It's uh, it's almost 12.30, just past noon. Hey, what up, Bobby? Good to see you. Yeah, but so what I wanna do is, since this, since this paper took the markers so well, is actually, <laughs> it showed through more than I expected it to for being such thick paper. But, yeah, it's a little surprising, actually. That's where I'm adjusting one of the other cameras here. Hey, Gray. Thomasville? Nice, that's not too far away. Anyways, maybe I can do another drawing here. And then, basically, when I did this drawing, I wasn't anticipating coming back in with the markers afterwards. But this time, I think that will be in my head. But you never know. Maybe I'll decide not to go into the markers at the end this time, right? Nice, sounds good, Impa Wimp. Enjoy the waffles. Yeah, I just take the photos with my phone. Yep. I mean, I, I tweak I tweak the settings a little bit with just with the Instagram filters, you know, like adjust the the brightness, the contrast, etc. So on and so forth, but most yes. I also have good lighting here at my desk that helps too. I only have like <clears throat> like an hour and a half or two hours before I have to go. So I just, let's just kind of draw, see what we can get done in that amount of time. Just do something, anything. It's cold, but we can't build a snowman just because it's cold. We got to have snow. I don't have no snow. If anything, I just have a lot of rain. There was they were predicting freezing rain at one point, but it just turned out to be regular old cold rain. Oh, extreme flooding? Well, Hey, Bird, good to see you. Uh, well, I hope, hope you are okay. Stay safe. Mm 
Good morning, Seth. Good to see you. Just a second, I have to click on something. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Have a good day, Dark Gamer. 30 centimeters of snow. Wow. Are you building a snowman? I'm just collecting some lines on the paper here, collecting them, slowly kind of assembling them. Really, drawing is like building a Lego set, but you have every Lego you could ever want, and there's no instructions, and you can put them together however you want, uh, which is a kind of weird experience sometimes, because some, a lot of the time when you're building a Lego set, it's kind of nice to have instructions so that you end up with something you know is definitely going to be very cool. Like if you had unlimited Lego pieces and no instructions, you know, it's probably pretty unlikely you're going to end up with that cool Death Star Lego set in the end, right? But there's a good chance you might end up, if you just experiment around a little, putting different pieces together in different ways, you might end up with something completely unforeseen that nobody has ever expected before a set that nobody else has ever built yeah it's basically minecraft sup scott <laughs> sorry there is aries are we at a million yet no whenever i look at it half the time i'm losing subs i don't know i don't look at that anymore it's too, I don't know. Just trying to have fun drawing stuff and posting videos. This drawing seems mostly to be straight lines right now. Chat's not showing on the TV? Oh. I don't know. I'm not sure. YouTube, I mean, all live streaming is kind of weird, especially when it's on strange devices and platforms. And I'm sorry, I wish I could help more. I'm sorry, I wish I could. So, Matthew, oh, you're in Guatemala? Good to see you. Welcome. Well, I'm just starting and drawing random lines, yeah. Yeah, the mechanical side of the spectrum, for sure. How long is the latrine going to last? Probably... Probably not between like one and two hours. Just gonna do just gonna just a few minutes of drawing, you know? Got a few minutes, gonna do a few minutes.
Aiken Christensen. Oh, Denmark, awesome. I don't know how I came to my style of drawing, just a combination of my brain and all my life experiences and everything. I don't know if there's one simple answer. Okay, man. Okay, ma'am. My bad. All right, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, you can watch it later. It'll be on YouTube. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep, just making it up on the go. Steam-powered printer. Hi, Anna. The pen again is a Studio Neat pen. They have a few different pens that look kind of similar. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. Because I think they were just kind of putting out I think they just kind of kept putting out new models. It's called like the Mark One or the Mark Three, you know? I, I don't know which one this is because they just have like slightly different like curvature here at the tip or something. I'm not sure what differentiates them. It's up El Presidente. Eating a peanut butter sandwich on your couch in Croatia. I know, I'm way over here drawing. You are way over there munching. I hope it's delicious. Mm -hmm. I think the next Peter Pen, don't tell nobody this, this might be a secret I'm not supposed to be telling, but I think the next Peter Pen might be a, a rollerball pen so that it has a little bit more mass appeal, you know? Because not everyone is into fountain pens. It's, more, it's kind of a niche thing, fountain pens. In art class together? Nice. That seems like a good, a good vibe. I like that. Welcome to art class. Commence drawing whatever you want. Even if you don't know what you want, you should probably start drawing. Because I don't know what I want, and I'm still doing it. just know I want to draw. I just know I'll like it later. When I look back at the paper, I'll be like, wow, I'm glad I drew. Even though I didn't know what I wanted to draw. Favorite artist? No. 
Although I will go get a book I want to show you because it's kind of something I have in my head right now. Hopefully I can find it. Give me one second. This is kind of the stuff that's in my head right now. This is like theor what's it called? Like a theoretical architect or um, Le Lebius Woods. Like he didn't make stuff that actually got built. And I've shown this in a video before. Um, contemporary architecture. I don't know. Conceptual architect. Anyways, I just let, this, this is like a book that shows a bunch of his, like, uh, sketches, you know? And a lot of them, I mean, I love the hatching and stuff, but there's this section back here from, like, it's like a really r rough sketches, like these sketches here. I love these. Check these out. You can kind of see the similarity with what I'm doing here, but these are even, like, looser. Pretty cool, right? Hey, hello to Lithuania and Montana. How's it going? Oh yeah, look at that. I've definitely been inspired by this kind of stuff before. It's like cool. I like like the compression down at this one point. Anyways, you get the idea. Obviously, I'm not trying to draw exactly that, but it's kind of one of the things that's kind of in my head right now. Lebius, Lebius Woods. I don't know if it's focusing.
sculpted a bonsai tree? Oh, you mean just like taking care of a bonsai tree? Do you mean sculpt by sculpting it? You mean like all the trimming and stuff you have to do? No, I've never done that. I mean, I, I wanted to get into it at one point, but then I got distracted by other things. It seems like a it seems like a cool hobby. I haven't got like a little book on how to care for bonsais and everything. Or is the plural just bonsai? Hey, Ruby. Dan. Ziggity Z. You tend to go back to the same composition ideas all the time. I mean, I feel like that happens to me, too. It's not the end of the world. I mean, for me, I think, I feel like part of it is the fact that I'm drawing on the same, like, I'm drawing here in a sketchbook. It's in like a tall, narrow piece of paper. And so my work keep, has, often has like this vertical element to it. I mean, I could try drawing in it like this or, you know, just try drawing on square pieces of paper. Obviously, that's just a small, it's just a little excuse. It's, but it's a small element. It kind of keeps pushing me back in the same direction. Any tips for beginners? Uh, I don't know. When it comes to drawing or art, just do whatever you want, I guess. Try not to overthink it. You're probably overthinking it. Whatever's going on, you're probably overthinking it. Like, you know, if, if you like art, if you like making art, if you're, if it's like in your brain, you know what you, what you're drawn to, what you like. So just try to let it flow back out of you a little bit. And it won't be easy. Like, it'll be frustrating sometimes because it won't be flowing out the way you envisioned it. But that frustration can keep you going because you want to get it right. Because you know it's in there somewhere. But you'll get there. You're sure that you're not sure of anything? No, I don't think I have a favorite drawing. Your father has seven children with five ladies who disappeared 44 years ago. All the kids left alone. You were 19 at the time. That's pretty cool, but I don't know if this is the right place to tell us all that stuff. All due respect. This, 
<laughs> oh, you sent you said more about some election. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for being. Oh, it's about labyrinths. Sorry if I'm not putting all the pieces together. <laughs> PB and J or ham and cheese? I definitely, I definitely prefer ham and cheese. Because ham and cheese you can put mayonnaise on. PB and J, they never have mayonnaise on them, and I'm a big mayonnaise fan. So I mean, I think that's where. That's why I like the PB, the ham and cheese. Narrating for audiobooks? Yeah. But it's a lot of work, actually. Because I've tried narrating some short stories, and even that. It's amazing how many like little mistakes and stuff you make when you're recording yourself reading you don't realize. And I don't think audiobook narrators make a lot of money. Unless you're like one of the top 0.01% of voices. I don't really think they're that highly valued in society. It's not that rewarding in general, I don't think. Maybe. It's just not high on my priority list. Try one shots. You mean just embrace the the mumbles and mistakes? That's probably the best way to do it actually. No editing. Yeah, a lot of people who read audiobooks also do voice acting on the side, or that's their main thing, and they're just reading audiobooks on the side, etc. So Pedro. Functional art like lamp sculptures and clocks. Yeah, I like it. Pretty cool. I mean, you can buy those little clock kits and put them in almost anything, you know? A little clock, what's it called? Like a mechanism? A uh, clockwork or something? There's some word for clocks. Just like the functional part. What time is it here? It's uh, almost 1, 1 p.m. Or I guess a military time or 24 hour clock would be like 13, 13 o'clock. Right?
This might be the flux capacitor, I don't know. It's a good question. I think I might come back to it later, refine that technology a little bit once I work on the rest of the drawing a little bit more. These lines here could represent the flow of the space-time continuum around it. That's why they're a little bit wiggly. Spark, all spark tuner, all spark tuning fork. Make sure it plays the right note. What you're watching is in the past because there's a slight delay. I mean, I guess everything you experience is a slight delay because it takes time for the light to reach your eyes and be processed by your brain. I think it's impossible for you to experience the present, isn't it? So like in the past, it's pretty cool. You guys want to see something cool I got? What do you think? <laughs> mm. Hmm. I think it's a Joker wig. I got it at like a thrift thrift store. It was on a mannequin. She Hulk. <laughs> Who's the chick? It's me. It's been me the whole time. Oh, it's getting in the camera, isn't it? It's, it's more hair than I'm used to. Uh, what's inside a black hole? I don't know, didn't they cover that in that documentary? And there were all those bookshelves inside. It's like an endless tesseract of bookshelves. They sent a guy in with a GoPro. And he came out in his daughter's bedroom or something. Oh yeah, Interstellar.
or Minecraft videos? Well, I never had plans for Minecraft videos, and they happened. So, you never know. They might. They always happen without plans, is what I'm saying. When they do happen, there never were plans. Can I schedule streams? Maybe eventually. Right now, this is only the third stream I've done after not streaming for four years. So, I don't know if I'm quite there yet. Still settling into it. Making a comic? Uh, I have a little graphic novel called Day Fever. It's on Amazon. Check it out if you want. It's not super long, but it has a... I think it has some cool drawings in it. Some of my best drawings, actually. Streaming? Yeah, streaming is pretty weird. I gotta admit, it is weird. It's not bad, though. It's just... It's odd. It's like talking to, like, a hundred people at once. And trying to look down at the paper. And draw. And talking to myself, yeah. <laughs> the wig is itchy. trying to find the balance between, you know, like coloring some things in darkly with the pen, but also I also want to leave some options for shading with the markers later. Because I can use like dark markers to do some shading also, so I don't want to take all those options away. What would I do if the world was going to end in one day? <laughs> Probably die in one day. It's eerie without the ASMR rambling. Well, it's weird when I, when I stop talking. Sorry, I don't have unlimited things to say. Sometimes there is silence in my mind. Which is actually a nice thing. You can put on some music of your own or something. I don't know what you're up to. Oh yeah, in my normal YouTube videos, it is prob it is usually kind of uh, non-stop talking. You're right. You're right. I don't know if it needs to be though, but I guess that is usually what happens. Mm 
Not too much smudging so far. Maybe it'll stay that way. But now I'm starting to put my hand on the top of the drawing more. As you can already see it's starting to smudge on my fingers a little bit. Nice Crixus. <laughs> nice. Glad to hear that. Hey Daniel, black light ink on white paper? Yeah, I've done that before. Ultrasonic diffuser. What is that? Yeah, it's kind of a version of writer's block. Avoid smudging while drawing with pencils. Don't put your hand on the paper. Don't touch it. It does smudge less if you put for example, put something between your hand and the paper, like another little piece of paper, or wear a little glove that covers these fingers, or you can put your paper on an easel, right, so it's vertical, and then you can more easily draw without your hand wanting to rest against the paper. And some people, when they're doing drawings, paintings, they use a thing called a, I think it's called a maul, where basically they have like a stick that they angle across the paper with like a little padded end and then they can rest their hand on the stick. You know what I mean? There's basically you just gotta figure out ways not to touch not to touch the paper. Can't draw without placing your palm on the paper. <laughs> well, keep smudging then. I feel like I just gave, well, I mean, I. I feel like I gave you a few solutions, and there's a lot more solutions. Besides those ones, too. It's a patanner. The third the kid the third high 2d animation uh wait, what was the intro to my last video i don't remember was it related to animation or something oh is it the one where all the little uh doodly images flashed by yeah 
Yeah. What about animation? Maybe. Accept smudges. Zebra G Flex. Uh, those are the uh, dip, dip pen nibs, right? No, I haven't used that recently. There's just so many pens. exceptions but usually it's more practical to only use one pen at a time so it just means I, I can only use so many pens it's not that easy to use all the pens in the world it takes time to get to them all and it's not my it's not my priority to use every pen my priority is to use pens that I enjoy drawing with so that the drawings the drawings usually turn out better if it's a pen I enjoy drawing with because some pens will feel like more of a chore to use based on the pen or based on your personal preferences or your drawing style or what kind of ink or paper you've got Glue a pen to your head. Try the unicorn method. I don't want to glue anything to my head. <laughs> two hands and also two feet with at least four pens at once. True. True. Yeah, the stone paper. Stone paper was kind of weird. I felt like drawing on plastic. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're just being silly, it's all right. some dotted lines. Stone paper makes your teeth hurt. Are you eating it? Sergio Aragones books? No, I don't think I've I don't think I've heard of him. Heard of him. 
After aging a while, it starts buckling on its own. Oh, the paper? Yeah, I wonder where that stone paper sketchbook I have is. I haven't looked at it in a while. I wonder if it has done something weird over time. Is that what you're talking about, the stone paper? So Mike, JB McKean, how are you? A paper stone. I think that's just when you ball up a piece of paper. Then you got yourself a paper stone. Shape of a rock but the, still the weight of paper. Oh yeah, yeah, nice pieces of big paper art do get expensive, for sure. And then, it, yeah, it can get into your head about, oh, I gotta make this piece of, I gotta make this drawing work, because I, I spent so much money on this piece of paper and then it gets into your head more and then I mean the more you get into your head about the cost of your art supplies the more likely you are to like mess up somehow or be unsatisfied with your work because you're like psyching yourself out you know it's definitely a struggle sometimes. I think that's why I like sketchbooks so much because it's just like 20 bucks and get a bunch of chances. Or however much sketchbooks cost. I have so many now. Even though I still have a bunch of unopened ones that I bought for myself, they weren't even given to me. Yeah, art supplies are meant to be used. Uh, what program do I use for my music? I use uh, Ableton. I started making. I started making another song, not too long ago. Last night I was messing with it. Maybe I can play it for you. But I don't know if I have the audio source set up. Wait, tell me if you can hear this, but I'm turning it down because I don't know how how loud it will be. I'm just playing a random song off uh, Spotify right now to see if you can hear it, but only for a second because I don't want YouTube copyright to hear to catch me. Tell me if you can hear this. Wait, wait, wait! No, it was muted. It was that was playing through my um. That was just you could hear it in the microphone. Um, How was that volume wise? That was quiet. Oops, on camera. Um, all right, we'll just listen to this. Tell me how the, tell me if it's too quiet or too loud.
How was that note? What did you think? I know I muted, I'm, I muted my mic because I didn't want my mic and that was loud. What about, <laughs> what about now? I turned it down by half. I want it to be like, okay, I'm just going to play it now. All right, it's a work in progress, okay? <laughs> Runescape music. <laughs> Does it really sound like Runescape music? <laughs> uh, yeah, the the horns. <laughs> All right, I gotta draw. <laughs> I was watching this HBO show called um, Rome and when they were like one of like Augustus's armies was like marching around and they had like those like marching horns you know like bah, 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 you know like I don't know I was kind of inspired by that yeah like adventure marching I mean I didn't really go it doesn't really sound like army I mean, like legion music or whatever but i think i was kind of what was in my head a little bit what's up jaleel good to see you shay what's up band camp yeah i was in marching band for one one year I played the mellophone. Stuck printer tune? I don't even remember that. Yeah. I played them I played them clarinet in middle school band, but then when I was in eighth grade, like the last grade of middle school. My sister's high school needed more people so bad they had me play in the high school band, in her high school band, when I was still in middle school. And I was like, yeah, I'm first chair clarinet in my middle school. <laughs> and they're like, no, you can't play clarinet. It's too quiet. We need more, more horns. We need brass. Here, take this mellophone. I'm like, what the heck is a mellophone? Like, it's the marching version of a French horn. And it looked like, it just looked like kind of a big chunky trumpet i'm like i've never even played a any kind of brass instrument before why they're like it's okay even if you just play every fifth note just march wave it around look flashy and the notes you do play play them really loud <laughs> Yeah, mellophone, a M E. I don't know if it's M E L O or M E L L O, but yeah, it just looks like a big trumpet, and it's heavy because you have to hold it straight out all the time, just marching around like this with a big trumpet. It's like, 
Exactly, Walter. Kind of crazy. I had just perfected the art of not having my clarinet read squeak all the time, and then they're like, nope. Gotta learn totally different embouchure. A beer can label? Mm, I drew one for my own beer one time when I was trying to brew beer. It didn't turn out very well. And the beer didn't taste very good. Actually, I don't know if I drew very much of it. It's mostly just made an illustrator. You can see a little bit of it right here. See, it says October, some, October, I just said Oktoberfest, it was October, I don't know, it says Peter, Peter Brews. <laughs> Picture with white ink? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I like black ink better. But the way I draw some of my lines, it's kind of like I'm drawing white with white ink because I like surround areas with like little, it kind of looks like there are white lines sometimes, you know. An illusion. Oh, it's definitely getting a little smudgy over here. I'm going to go back up here for a bit. Kind of annoying to have my hand hanging off the edge of the sketchbook here. Maybe if I put a little, oops, a little pad of paper here, it'll be a bit better. Theory of the Deep by Peter. Wait, what is that? Yeah, I, I kind of am intrigued by the idea of starting with a planning sketch just because I've not been doing that for so long. I think something interesting could happen. But even that planning sketch would probably be a type of doodle itself, so it's not like I would totally be abandoning my previous methods and style. I don't know, I've, I've toyed around with that idea before and it hasn't really worked, but you know, I might have given up too quickly. Am I the only Peter? I think so. 
No. No other Peters ever anywhere. I've really only met other one other Peter like in my life. I think it must be a more cop popular name than like Europe or something. I'm not sure. It's not a very popular American name. That's for sure. Is it a gel pen? I think it is a type of gel pen, yeah. It's hard to say because the, um, I'm trying to find the refills. The refills don't give a lot of um, details. Here's what the refills look like. Focus. It just, this is all it says on it. There's like, that's it. But I mean, it feels like a gel pen, more or less. Diameter rotring isograph. I mean, my favorites for like just general use was always like the 0.3 or the 0.35. Built a pen from scratch? Absolutely. When I picked up a stick from the ground and sharpened it and dipped it in ink. But that might not be from scratch if you consider that I didn't plant the tree myself. Still letting the forces of nature do a large part of the work there. Didn't plant it myself, didn't water it, didn't trim it and stuff. I should do that again sometime. That was a fun video to make. <clears throat> yeah, source the earth and then like, uh, really you should be like, probably planting and, and harvesting the seeds for generations and, you know, selectively breeding the trees and seeds to make sure that it grows, prefer, you know, the best kind of sticks for drawing with. It really should take years and years. It probably, you know, bamboos, people do make those bamboo dip pens and that probably be a good way to do it if you're going to be selectively breeding your sticks because bamboo grows so fast be quicker to get through the generations become the light itself <laughs> to photosynthesize it so pal thanks you doing all right Let's look at what we've got here so far.
bamboo fabric. Mm -hmm. All right. Right before I went live, I posted on Instagram. So I'm just checking on my post. Oh my God, there's comments. And likes. All right, great. A machine gun car. It's a V Starfire. Oh, wow. Well, glad to see you here. Glad I helped somehow. Welcome. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm excited to go to Florence also. Does anyone here have Verizon and know how it works to get, like, international phone service? I need to look into that for when I'm in Italy. Fried potatoes for lunch. Mmm, chicken, chili, tortillas. I feel a sneeze coming. Uh, gotta look into the bright lights. It's not working. Not working at all. What a businessman like expensive fountain pen so much? What's the deal? Um, I feel like a lot of those people like expensive everything. What's the deal? Yeah, they wear expensive watches. Then, like, Casio tells time just as well. What's the deal with that? It's all the same thing. It's all about, like, status and having cool things, and they have the money, so they spend it. I don't know if it... It seems pretty straightforward. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it's weird, I know, but it's just kind of... society, I guess. I don't know. If they hear they can have a regular pen or spend a bunch of money on a fancy pen that says they're rich, why not? Yeah, status item, exactly. My own song is stuck in my head. That's pretty cool. I don't know if that's ever happened before. A three euro fountain pen. Well, it might have been because it was cheap and it might have been because some fountain pens are just very fragile. Also, I don't know how it broke.
drawing mouths. I'm using a uh, Studio Neat pen. Same with the sketchbook. See? Studio Neat. Oh yeah, a fall on the ground can bend the nib of any pen. It could mess up a you know, like a ballpoint pen if it. I mean, like a regular, you know, like a ballpoint pen like this probably wouldn't get messed up. I think partly just because it's not heavy enough. But like this one, if the tip was out and it fell on the ground, it could maybe I could see it getting messed up. I'm smudging so much, but I don't care. Favorite TV shows? I think I'm, right now I'm watching this TV show called um, You Don't Know Me. It's just like a four episode mini series. I think that's what it's called. Mm hmm Gold spot pens. I like them just because I'm friends with the people who run it. And they, obviously, they put my pens on their website. I think I want to extend this kind of weird pattern here all the way across the bottom. Tips for keeping up morale? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not always the best at that. I wish I had the answers. Are we interested in collaborating with other creatives in the future? You know, to be honest, not really. I feel like a lot of people ask if I want to collaborate and then I, I give some vague answer like, yeah, maybe so, I'll think about it, but I don't think I want to. Yeah, I grew, I grew, I, I might have grown a few things in my cabinet, in my closet, Mr. Mycologist. Just because I didn't know where to get them, so, but you can buy the spores online. They come in a little syringe. <laughs> I 
What is your feeling about drawing tablet, iPad? Well, I mean, it's all right. Yeah, I don't like it as much personally, but a lot of people seem to really love it. So I think it's just a personal preference thing. Also, I think it's like just getting used to the program, you know, learning all the little options, like the hotkeys and shortcuts and stuff goes a long way to making it a better experience. So if you don't stick with it, if you don't give it enough of a chance to get comfortable with the software and get, you know, get the most out of it, you're going to think it's an inferior process because a lot of the upside of, you know, using digital is all of that stuff, you know. Like, I personally don't spend most of my time doing digital drawing, even though I have an iPad and an Apple Pencil and everything. But I don't think it's a bad way to go at all. How many sketchbooks did I fill up already? I've only filled up maybe like three or four sketchbooks, because my problem is I'm drawing in like ten sketchbooks at once. Because I keep getting sketchbooks to like review and stuff like this one. <laughs> So I'm all over the place, but it's not the end of the world. It's all, it's all good. Yeah, exactly, Disco San Andreas. Yeah, I like having a main sketchbook. I have a main sketchbook. It's, uh, I mean, it's right here. I'm half, it's half, it's half full. You, know, you can kind of see how I'm this far for, I'm this far through it. I flipped through it the other day on stream. It's got some cool drawings in there. Maybe more than halfway, I don't know. That's my main one right now. You plaster yours with stickers? Yeah, I put all my stickers on like my water bottle or some other thing. Oh. Oh. Color after I'm done. Usually I keep it black and white, but if I color, I do usually do it after I'm done. You can see the previous drawing here. I did some kind of grayscale shading. Well, the gray markers I grabbed were all what they called um, green-gray. Different shade, different intensities of green-gray. So you might be able to tell that this gray has a bit of a green tinge to it. So I'm thinking I will go and do that with this one too. And now I'm seeing that these have a similar, sh a similar kind of layout in that... Uh, there's like a structure and it goes up like this. You know, no reason to stress out. Some things can look the same. It's fine. But I can also try fighting back against it too. I don't know if I will, but maybe that's what I'm doing right now.
lean into it. Yeah. I feel like when you try to fight against something like that that you're doing subconsciously, it's maybe it doesn't turn out so well all the time. Usually, I feel like when I'm d doing something like that subconsciously over and over again, I do. It's almost just feels better to lean into it until it just gets out of my system all by itself. Until my brain gets tired of it. And eventually my brain will latch onto something else and want to draw something else, you know? Like I said, don't overthink it. Just kind of... Just trying to, I'm just trying to let it flow. Yeah, exactly. Peter Plushy. <laughs> I don't even know what that would look like. You're saying like a plushy version of actually me? I'm a, I feel like I'm a pretty generic looking thing. It would just look like a little person. I don't have like a, I don't have like a mascot or anything to turn into a plushy. I mean, some companies have contacted me saying like, hey, we make plushies for all these other big YouTubers. You need to make a plushy for your fans. I'm like, uh, oh, that sounds kind of excessive. I feel like the more random little things you do like that, it just kind of seems like a weird money grab. I'm already trying to sell pens. Even those sometimes I have a hard time selling. I want every video to be about me trying to sell something to people. A Roman Peter plushie, a Sog Dog plushie, over overly realistic. That would be funny if they could make a really weird realistic one. Yeah, I try to sell Squarespace a lot. It's true, <laughs> but that keeps that keeps all my bills bills paid for the most part. So they pay me up pretty pretty much up front. Like I don't have to wait for some some kind of em inventory to to empty for that to work. That's why I like doing that. It's just like, make the video, get paid. I don't have to wait for like a certain number of y'all to sign up or something. It's very cut and dry. That's alright, be Starfire. Hope the uh, hope the art classes go well. Would I be in a movie? Sure, I guess. I don't know. I've never tried acting before. I don't know if I. I don't know if you can just do it. Like it could be way more difficult than it is in my head. I feel like a lot of people just assume that acting's like simple. Like you just just act. Just do it. But it might not be that simple. I'm acting myself. Even that is weird sometimes. Just being yourself. <laughs> Done the first twenty-five courses in two days. All right. Be careful. Don't get don't get burnt out. But have fun. It sounds like you're having fun. Sometimes you just gotta slow down and let give the knowledge a chance to settle in a little bit. You know. Nice Lars bow. 
well, uh, I didn't, I never, I never got very good at it. I'll say that. But I'm sure you were incredible. Am I winning? I guess so. Don't feel like I'm losing. I don't know if the final score is out yet. Oh, and I watched this one TV show. It was called, like, maybe someone knows what I'm talking about. It was called, like, Yo-Yo Kukenshin or something. It was, like, a Japanese show. It was, like a, it was essentially like a live-action anime. I don't know if it was actually an anime or a manga originally. But it was about this guy who becomes a spirit detective. Does anyone know what show I'm talking about? Where he becomes a spirit detective? I usually don't watch TV shows like that. I don't know why. Yu Yu Hakasho? Yeah, that sounds right. But for some reason, I really enjoyed it. Like, that is not my usual type of show to watch. But for some reason, it was just the right level of, like... It was, like... It could have had the potential to for me to think it was, like, really cheesy and dumb, but I really liked it. Just, like, all the, like the character progression, you know... Of like the training arc. It had all the classic anime things of like training arcs and people getting powers and you know, have it going to like a a guru and getting another power and people like I don't know. And then like the fight scenes were actually pretty awesome. I like the fight scenes a lot, like people like the slow mo and running on walls and you think this one guy's defeated that he comes back even stronger. There was this one guy that he got so strong. He was just, his whole body was just like these weird twisted muscles. He was so strong. He would go like this with his thumb. And he'd go. Poof. And he was, it was like he was shooting bullets just with the flick of his thumb. That's how strong he was. He was like, pa, pa. That was one of the villains he had to fight. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> it was so stupid, but I loved it. Because I feel like the fight scenes in that show were like the fights I used to have with my action figures, you know, like diving across rooms and, you know, shooting energy balls at each other and crap, you know. <laughs> Just stupid but awesome. I don't know. <laughs> Just one of those shows you can't go into it expecting something uh, too serious. Yeah, it's live action. What action figures I have? I just had like little, uh, I don't know if they were actual like G.I. Joe brand G.I. Joes, but they were just, I called them G.I. Joes. They were the ones that you could like move the arms and legs all around and if you pull them apart they have like rubber bands inside the body holding them together. Do you know what I'm talking about? I had other little toys too, but those were some of the ones I remember the most. Uh, 
Uh huh. Yep, I'm a Peter. Are you the same one that asked that a few minutes ago? I'm still a Peter. Oh no, the other person asked, am I the only Peter? To which I confidently said, yes. Fake it till you make it. And I'm not saying that means I'm trying to get rid of all the other Peters, but I'm not saying I'm not. You have another Peter there? Huh. Well, tell him to watch out. And that's not a threat. That's a promise. There's also... Anyone ever heard of Petey Pablo? He's from here in North Carolina. Also one of the Peters of all time. What percent of my art do I think is great artwork? Mm. It's a tough question. Great artwork? I, mean, I like a lot of it, but I don't know if any of it is... I don't know if I've reached that level of making great artwork yet. I don't know, that's tough. Every now and then I think I'm starting to scratch the surface, but I just don't know. It's tough. I gotta keep going. Gotta keep trying and working on it. It's more for fun, Josiah, yeah. And I, I really want to ask where I am in North Carolina. I'm in uh, Greensboro. I've been to Marsville, though. I have a friend that used to live there. Don't know if I really like what I did just there, but we can work with it. Push myself to sit down and get started? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Usually the problem is I just have like other things to do or I just feel like doing something else more, like just some other random thing like I'd rather just play a video game or eat food or go to bed or, you know, it's just like the basic, other basic life things or watch TV or I don't know. 
But I guess I guess that's what you're asking. But sometimes you need to do all those other things so that the desire to draw again slowly bubbles up to the top. I read somewhere in a book, and I think I said this before. It's like art, artists don't get down to the don't get down to work until the the pain of working is less than the pain of not working, which is kind of true. I mean, there is some struggle and pain to, to making things, even if it's fun and enjoyable. You still got to sit down and do it, you know? I actually haven't been playing any video games lately. The last one I was really into was RuneScape, and I haven't really found one to replace that one yet. I tried playing Escape from Tarkov, but it was too stressful. I just like all the amazing animations in that game when they're like reloading their gun or eating a piece of food or something. What's up, He-Man? How are you? Han Hannes? How do you say your name? Hannes? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for saying hi. Do you think waiting for inspiration is a waste of time? Uh, maybe sometimes. I, mean, I, th I think it was Picasso that said sometimes inspiration finds you while you're working, right? So it, it can definitely, to a certain extent, sometimes maybe you should just start instead of waiting, but sometimes you can wait and then eventually it'll happen. I don't think anything's a waste of time. I mean, drawing can be a waste of time. I mean, what, what really is the point of what I'm doing right now? It's all about your priorities and what you think is important. Hey, Ghosty Cat. Baldur's Gate? Oh, yeah. No, no, I like Baldur's Gate. I played it a bunch, I think, and I heard there... Yeah, I think I could play it again and make... Even though I, I played, like, all of Act 1 and maybe a little bit of Act 2, I think I could uh, give it a little bit more time and start over, and I think you can make totally different decisions, and it could be awesome again. Triangle bit on the middle left. Are oh, you talking about this part or this part? I'm bad at finding parts of my own drawings that people are replying or indicating. We need a grid system. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Shay. Who am I romancing in Baldur's Gate? I think I was trying to have sex with everyone that I could. But is that not the point? The middle stitching? Oh. Oh, you mean like these parts coming out? Larger drawings? Yeah. Yeah, I would like that too. But then, one thing that happened to me is, like, there was some guy in my camp that was, like, a vampire. And I messed up some interaction where I was, like, there was some interaction where I was trying to let him turn me into a vampire. But something happened where then I like fought back against him 
and I ended up like killing him or kicking him out of my camp or something. And he was one of my favorite characters. I think that's why I, I got annoyed. I was like, no, I just wanted him. He started biting my neck or something. I don't know. Something weird and annoying happened. Maybe I should have just saved more often. Drawings by Trent. No, I've never heard of that. But I just know, I feel like a game like Baldur's Gate, the longer you wait to play it, the more, like, patches there will be, maybe mods, stuff like that, and the longer it will be since I, ha I have played it, so I won't remember as much, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? I'm oh, sorry, draw drawing off camera here. Here's a challenge. Fill up a full page of 11 by 17 Bristol paper. Oh yeah, sounds good. Let me know how it goes. What is my favorite music? Um, I don't know if I could choose a favorite music. Yeah, my style changes throughout drawing sometimes. Usually if there's a style change, it's nearer to the beginning because I don't really, haven't really settled into something near the beginning. Still trying to like feel it out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm about to go to I'm about to go to class in a few minutes and work on doing some more sculpture. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to class and we're gonna make something called slip, which is just clay, but we have to put something in the clay to keep it from separating and becoming unliquid. Uh, it's called um, it's called um. Deflocculant. Cool word. See, so look, this is a handout I got. Slip. And what every cer ceramist? Ceramist? Is that a real word? I thought it was ceramicist. Ceramist. Well, mixing 500 gallons of low fire casting body? Who in the world would be able to store 500 gallons? We could probably do that at school, actually. All of the material that we use is in 50 pound bags, and the total dry weight of the tout clay and whiting will be 5,000 pounds? Two and a half tons? I was describing how to make slip and uh, I don't know why I was why I was showing you that.
Guys, I got a draw. This is, we're making good progress on this though. Is it an abstract sculpture? I mean, with the slip casting, you can do whatever you want. The idea is that you can make a mold and then use that mold to make whatever you cast over and over again. So you, you could just make a mold of a mug or you could make a mold of an abstract sculpture. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I'm thinking until I make my own thing to make a mold of, I might make a mold of this styrofoam head, then I can do something crazy with the head, or I might do this little toy laser gun I have, even though, I don't know if it's, I don't know, we'll see. Or I have this this glass vase, I could do that and make my own vase out of it. Uh, Let's draw. Because the first few molds and castings I make with this slip is just going to be learning the process. <laughs> These dots right here are, uh, these are the windows in the control building. And these, they're big, floor to ceiling windows, those little dots, okay? Famous royalty free artist, dude. Yeah, Kevin McLeod. Cast a living monkey? No, probably not. You have to leave it encased in <laughs> plaster for hours. Maybe if you gave it a little breathing tube and it promised to stay very still. Do you promise? No moving. A floor to ceiling? I don't know what you're talking about. Create one, create a living monkey by pouring the right materials into a mold. Is that some kind of alchemy? Casting a pineapple? Yeah, I was at the grocery store and I was looking at the pineapple. The problem with spiky things like that is they get caught in the mold, but with something like a pineapple, you can destroy the item when you're pulling it out instead of the mold. But then you pour the clay in there and the clay is gonna get hard in the mold and it's gonna have all these spiky, hard, like the hard spiky parts of the pineapple in the hard parts of the mold, right? And it's gonna be hard to get the clay the clay pineapple out of the plaster mold. One way to get around that is to get rid of some of the spiky parts or to just increase the parts of the mold instead of doing like a two part mold, do like a three or four part mold. So I don't know how to describe it. Oh, floor to ceiling. I was talking about these little, these little dots right here being floor to ceiling windows in my mind. That's what they are. It's like a little control tower right here. There's some antennas, okay. I like drawing antennas. Cast a can of barbecue bushes baked beans. You know what I want to do now is make, cast a cast iron pan, but make it in ceramic. And then like do these like intricate 
like uh, like fine china drawings on it. That'd be kind of interesting. Because it's a dish that's usually so solid and hard. Guys, I gotta go, all right? We made good progress today. I'm gonna finish this up later. I may or may not stream it. Maybe I will stream later today and finish this up. But if I don't, then you can see the final product later when I edit and post the video. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out today. You're all wonderful, beautiful. Thank you for chatting. Thank you for all the support. Like the video, okay? I don't know where that button is. Thank you. And um, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, okay? Thank you so much. Appreciate the support and um, just hanging out, saying hi, all right? Take care. Okay, bye. Goodbye.